Hi Rams, welcome back to this week's K-Ram. I'm Kenny Carls. And I'm Matt Anderson. And our lead story this week. Last Thursday, a group of K-Ram and yearbook students went up to CSU Fort Collins for a conference and competition with all the students' journalism programs in the state. They gathered with their fellow journalists to learn better journalism techniques and compete on the highest level. On Thursday, September 30th, K-Ram and yearbook went to the premier student journalism event in Colorado. J-Day, which is hosted by the Colorado Student Media Association, is a statewide event held to bring together student journalists and acknowledge achievement in media. J-Day is a journalism conference that KRAM and Yearbook goes up to where a bunch of professional journalist people um, just talk to us and give us advice about um, our specific forms of journalism, so Yearbook and KRAM. Where we get high school students from all around the state here to learn about, hey, what different schools do in their journalism departments and really learn some extra skills to help you get into college and figure out, hey, what is this journalism and media communication thing we do? After an extended break during COVID, J Day is happening again and people are excited. The event is an important part of the framework for Colorado student journalism. J Day to me is a chance to, I mean, I always say it, it's a chance to get one idea to take back to school, to implement in your publication, your media program. Um, oftentimes these are our, our best students and so um, it's hard to find that one new thing and yet every year we come and we're impressed and we learn a ton and um, I think the second part of it is that we get to be together. It's this really cool family where we see each other a couple times a year and um, you always leave with a smile and a little bit bigger brain and it's a good stuff. I think, I think events like this help students get a sense of what this business actually looks like on the ground, right? It takes it from the abstract, um, though many of them are working at their, at their papers or their yearbooks or are on broadcast and they're, they're doing the practice. The opportunity to hear from people who are veterans who have been doing this for a long time or who have been teaching, it helps them. To, it helps inform them about what all of the different aspects of this work. As well as several other awards, Rampart was inducted into the Colorado Media Association Hall of Fame. Kim earned this through their dedication to journalism through the last seven years. It's a really big deal. It's a fairly new distinction that Colorado Student Media Board decided on a handful of years ago because we have Best of Colorado, we have, you know, um, J-Day awards, we've got the critiques, we've got some contests and things throughout the year, and we have schools who have been coming to J-Day and who have been doing the uh, Colorado Student Media critiques for 30, 40, 50 years, right? Well, I think it's a testament to the students that have come through here, because in order to be uh, in the Hall of Fame, you have to have gotten six out of the last seven years what they call an all Colorado rating, which we received for last year, even during COVID, which is the highest award a journalism program can receive. We're the only the second video broadcast program in the state to ever have done it. Uh, and, the, and the first program no longer exists. So honestly, we'll be um, kind of showing the rest of the state that Rampart is a journalism force to, to be reckoned with. J-Day is an integral part of Colorado student media and continues to inspire young journalists to pursue their passions. This has been Jackson Champagne reporting for KRAM. Stay safe, Rams. I went with them, and it was an epic day for Rampart journalism. Last week in Rampart sports, volleyball beat Fort Collins three sets to one. They play Doherty tonight at 6 p.m. in the gym if you want to cheer them on. Soccer beat Lewis Palmer on Monday 2-0 and is having a strong season. They are 7-3-1 and one overall and 5-1 and one in the league. Karim took a look at the season so far and caught up with the team. The boys soccer team is a beloved sport here at Rampart High School. This year's team's goal is to make it to states. We asked some players what their plans were to achieve this goal. So offensively, we're really working on keeping the ball and possessing it and moving it side to side. And then defensively, we've been working on our press um, and really attacking teams quickly once we win the ball. Win league and make it to state. Just because I was on varsity last year. Um, so just think just bringing back that leadership, that experience. Um, so as a team, we're ready and we're prepared for what the season will bring. Work hard in games and always give our 
is the start of another season, the team has added some new incoming freshmen and sophomore. We asked how these new players has changed the team for the better. It's affected the team in a good way. I think they brought intensity that we needed on the varsity level compared to last year's team. Pretty hard just because the Denver teams in our area are really good this year. But I think it's doable if we work hard in our trainings and play good in the games. <laughs> the goals for the soccer team this, this season are pretty similar to what they were last season. Just to be better than we were uh, the year before. Um, obviously winning league would be amazing. Um, going farther in state than we have or ever have been would be amazing. The players are super excited and have high hopes for the season. Good luck team. This is Mujib Najafi signing off. Soccer faces Doherty at D20 Stadium Saturday at 11 a.m. if you want to come and cheer them on. Speaking of cheers, our home game would not be the same without the support of the Rampart Rowdies in the stands. The Rowdies bring energy to the games and the athletes as they compete. Let's see what it means to be a Rampart Rowdy. There's a bond that holds school, students, and sport together. That bond is the Rowdies. I'm a part of Rowdies because I want to get more people like included in sports and activities and just get the Rampart spirit throughout all of Rampart. I'm a part of Rowdies because I really like cheering at games and I think I'm an energetic person so I'm good for the job. I wanted to help sponsor Rowdies um, ever since we started Rowdies. It actually stands back from my time as a Texas Aggie and the Yell Leaders and just another set of people to really boost and bolster the spirit um, and pride within a school dynamic and the school culture. So um, as the position came open to be able to, to take over Rowdies, I wanted to be sure that I could be part of that. Here at K-Room, we like to see what goes on behind the scenes. To get a better understanding of the Rowdies, we dug a little deeper to see what the members' schedules and activities look like. Basically, we have a few meetings before the games, and then we just go and cheer. Most of the time, we come like 20, 30 minutes before the game is set up, and then we just go to the game. The schedule looks really busy. We have 22 Rowdies right now. We're bringing in some manager trainees that are freshmen and sophomore, and um, they are at at least a presence of them at our goal is anyway to be at all of the different sporting events. So the schedule is super busy because we have a lot of different sporting events. Um, so it's a continuum. There's different people that go. That's why we made it um, a lot bigger so that we could be sure and cover things and not have everybody spread so thin. We also asked the Rowdies why they think being a Rowdy is important. The rowdies are important because we help get people spirited and like involved with Rampart. And if we don't have the rowdies, most of like the games would be pretty boring and we wouldn't have anybody like talking or like doing cheers. I think that being a rowdy is important because it's just a way to get everybody super excited about being in school. It's a way to make school fun when, you know, so it's not just the classwork and it's a way for people to get more connected to their peers. Rowdies are important because to me, especially coming from Texas, um, there's a lot of school spirit when I, where I grew up. And so I want to be sure that we are showing that here and that we are all supporting one another. That's part of being the family and the, the climate and community of Rampart is that we're all supporting each other. Um, so being a rowdy and being able to help everybody else feel included and spirited um, is just an integral part of that high school experience. Uh, rowdies is really fun. Um, you get to learn the cheers a lot better. You sort of have a little bit more leadership experience, and it's just really fun to go and cheer at games. People should join Rowdy's to be able to help bolster that spirit, to be able to help others. I joined Rowdy Council because I wanted to embrace the spirit of Rampart and make it really fun um, because, you know, doing spirit days, going all out for games, it's just a really fun way to get involved and make the most of your high school experience. The spirit of the Rowdy's lives within us all, Rams, so let's get Rowdy support each other and our athletes. This is Kyra Bass reporting for KRAM. Let's fill the stands with Rowdy's every game Rampart. This year Rampart switched to a one-on-one -on -one technology format. For the first time ever, each and every Rampart student has a school-issued laptop. KRAM wanted to see the tech staff behind the scenes that makes this all possible. Over the last couple of years here at Rampart, technology has grown to be one of the most important tools for our education. The question still remains, who keeps it functioning? Join us as we here at KRAM find out. Technology coordinator is a lot of different things. Some of that's um, helping out with the assemblies. Um, you may have seen me 
running a PowerPoint for some of the assemblies in the middle of the gym. I also am helping out check out computers to students so that everyone has equal access to all our wonderful technology throughout the school. Right now we have uh, about 1,950 devices in the building um, checked out. We have all but about 100 students have picked up their laptop. But that's 1950 is uh, all of the laptops for the students, all of the staff laptops. The benefits for having a computer by the school is that it has all of the school access computers and then you also have printing that you can do in the library so you don't have to worry about printing at home. Whenever a student has any issue they can come down to the tech office and we'll help them get whatever it is fixed. Uh, I got six of them that I'm working on right now. It's, it's never ending. I basically have about three and a half times more laptops to deal with now than I did last year. With all the students having computers, there are new opportunities for them to use their computers for their own creativity. This is the maker space room and a maker space is literally a space where you come in and you make things, you create. Um, you come up with ideas or problems that you want to solve and you use the technology in this room to create. It is not currently a class. I have invited teachers to bring their classes here as soon as it's set up. For now, I will be doing some after school, like fun makerspace days. Everybody having a computer really has made a huge difference in the school because we all have the same computer. You can have the same uh, tools downloaded onto your computer. So there's more equity across a school building. We have a 3D printer. It's really great great fun you get to create uh, in Tinkercad you can create a prototype or you can find something online that you really like and you want to attempt to print once you find that you can get it to me we'll slice it and we will take however long it takes to print it up so I think that it's just really fun it's something that you can learn a lot about and that's what not just our future is holding right right now these are what jobs are looking like you've got to know how to use technology and so learning those skills is something really important here are some basic tips on how to keep your computer functioning correctly many students got a case if you have a case put the computer in the case when it's in your backpack if you ever get you know upset that you turned your computer on and now it's updating and it's updating for an hour uh, that would be because it's closing the lid, not turning the computer off the correct way. Um, also, just make sure your backpack kind of upright and not flat, so there's not a lot of, you know, you don't want a lot of books on your computer. Thank you so much, Carol Kramer, Brian Phillips, and Andrew McFarland for taking care of the students' technological needs. This is Brandon Lopez, signing off. Please make sure and thank the Tech Office staff for all they do to keep our school running. The next time you see them. That's all we have for this week, Rams. Tune in next week for more KRAM coverage. This has been Matthew Anderson and Kenny Carls. Stay safe, Rams. 7-3, what does that even mean? Why are you scrolling so fast? Dude, stop messing up! This is all your fault, bro. I messed Every up. Every part of the Rampart Rowdies. The Rod, these break do and s s keep our school running and next time we see them. Please make sure and thank Tech, yeah, we'll go with the last one. <laughs> Oh, it's coming out of my chest! Oh. <laughs> I need an expo marker. <laughs>